first, party second. I dare the conservatives to laugh again. I see they're not. They're quiet. In an unexpected spectacle that not only amused onlookers, but also captivated the attention of both political analysts and comedians alike, Jabmeet Singh, the charismatic and often colorful leader of the NDP, found himself momentarily at the epicenter of both controversy and humor during a parliamentary session. Known widely for his passionate activism surrounding social justice and his lively engagement in policy discussions, Singh, albeit inadvertently, turned the spotlight away from a typically mundane parliamentary debate. Instead, he transformed it into a scene resembling a bustling comedy club rather than the reverential chambers expected in the House of Commons. The air was filled with echoing laughter and amused whispers as Singh, with an expressive passion akin to that of a Shakespearean actor performing on stage, choreographed a vivid scene spotlighting what he suggested was a palpable menace permeating the conservative ranks. This episode quickly became a goldmine of material for those chronicling political affairs, providing rich fodder for analysis and satire. However, it was Singh's actual live audience, a blend of parliamentarians and citizens, who were left in a state of bemusement. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. As the initial ripples of amusement slowly subsided, the scenes and sounds vividly experienced in the House of Commons almost instantaneously became subjects of widespread parody and laughter across various media platforms. Singh's vivid self-depiction as a steadfast defender of Canadian values, a portrayal perhaps more fitting for a casual setting or a theatrical production, elicited laughter comparable to that reserved for beloved television sitcoms. Remarkably, during those times of shared amusement, traditional partisan divides seemed to temporarily diminish. For a brief moment, the usually reserved conservatives and liberals found themselves united in laughter, illustrating a rare and fleeting moment of unity in Canada's typically fractious political landscape. It's frequently stated that politics can form unusual alliances, yet who could have predicted that it would foster such unexpected comedic camaraderie? Despite his earnest rhetoric, Singh's denunciation of conservative figures as thugs failed to carry the persuasive weight he might have foreseen. This raises an intriguing question. Did his fervor eclipse the thoughtful deliberation of his words? Mr. Speaker, country first, party second. Yes. Yes. According to the RCMP, the Indian government hired thugs to terrorize Canadians. The Conservatives are laughing about this, but people have died as a result, okay. and they've meddled in our politics. Yes. The Prime Minister has said that there are multiple Conservative MPs and or candidates compromised. They may be sitting in the chamber right now. But the Conservative leader chooses ignorance. Has the Prime Minister directly urged the leader of the Conservatives to get his security clearance? Here, 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 here. The Honourable Minister for Public Security. Mr. Speaker, uh, we thank our Honourable colleague for the question. We've been clear. We think all party leaders in this House should have the required security clearance so they can receive information concerning the threats to this House or the threats to Canada involving foreign interference. We also take the comments of the Leader of the NDP very seriously with respect to protecting Sikh Canadians and protecting those who have been victims of this foreign interference by the Government of India. My responsibility as Public Safety Minister is to ensure the safety of all Canadians, and that's exactly what we're going to continue to do. Here, here, here. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. I First party second. I dare the Conservatives to laugh again. I see they're not. They're quiet. Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi must not see that a Canadian leader is willing to turn a blind eye to crimes committed against Canadians. Every of this House must condemn India's interference and there must be consequences for parliamentarians who contribute to it. Did the Prime Minister directly urge the Conservative leader to apply for his security clearance? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister was very clear. We fundamentally believe that all party leaders in this House must have their security clearance appropriately so they can learn what is needed to manage their parliamentary caucuses and understand the threats that Canadians are facing. And I applaud fully the, f the feelings of the NDP leader in terms of condemning uh, the government of India's interference. And I congratulate the work of the RCMP for their work. And I know that the investigation underway will um, prove to be trustworthy. Nevertheless, a focal point of Singh's discourse was his unwavering insistence on reassessing security clearances amidst whispers of foreign involvement. 
an assertion that, while contentious, targeted a heightened call for vigilance. This multifaceted narrative seems ready-made for an enthralling television drama featuring clandestine operatives and conspiratorial machinations within the hollowed corridors of Canada's governance, a storyline that holds the potential to captivate international audiences. Uh, I find it troubling that the only federal leader in our country right now that has not gotten security clearance to hear about foreign interference is Pierre Polyev. I don't want the Indian government to think that there's one political leader willing to look the other way when this serious level of allegations are being put forward. And that's why I'm urging him to put partisanship aside, get the security clearance, know what's going on, let's have a united front. Let's be together on the same side against the Modi government, against the Indian government that's putting Canadian lives at risk. On the issue, that's what he says. He, he won't get the clearance because he wants to be able to speak freely. Since you've received the clearance, do you feel hindered at all? Do you feel you're able to speak freely about foreign interference? Absolutely. I've spoken freely. I've disagreed. Uh, after I received the, the briefing, I disagreed with the finding of the special rapporteur. If folks remember, he came with a certain conclusion. I read uh, the documents in that case, and I came up with a different conclusion, and I rejected what the special rapporteur had said. And so uh, there is no, th that, that's, a, that's a false allegation. That is a false thing that Mr. Polyev is saying, that, that somehow would limit. I've been able to say anything I need to say that, that focuses on protecting Canadians, and that should be the priority. A leader should have in their mind the utmost and most important thing is country first, protecting our country, protecting Canadians. I can only think that he's making the decision for partisan reasons, and I'm urging him to put partisanship aside. We've just heard from the RCMP that Canadians are being targeted. Canadians are being shot at. Their homes are being shot at. Their businesses are being shot at. They're being extorted. And it directly is being, is being alleged, it is directly being orchestrated by Indian government officials. Knowing that, I can't imagine why anyone who is a leader in our country wouldn't want to get every piece of information possible. There is a reason why every other federal leader has agreed to look at that, those documents, has agreed to get the security clearance. And that's why I'm deeply troubled that Pierre Polyev wants to be the only federal leader in a time when we have active threats against Canadians, that he wants to be the only leader that doesn't want to look at what's going on. That does send a message to the Indian government that there's one leader that's willing to look away. That, to me, is deeply troubling. Through his theatrical narrative, he positioned himself as the courageous hero, bravely standing firm against the supposed nefarious adversaries, whom he daringly labeled as thugs. He pondered not only the theatrical spectacle they witnessed, but also considered who their actual champions might be within the political scene. Despite Singh's flamboyant style and engaging rhetoric, reminiscent of a superhero poise and ready for a climactic duel, his performance didn't manage to fully convince the parliamentary audience. Many left the session skeptical of his self-assigned heroic role. This intriguing escapade unfolded against the backdrop of burgeoning concerns about international interference in domestic politics, which provided fertile ground for Canadian meme creators. They eagerly seized the opportunity to create content that soon went viral. Consequently, this incident transcended the traditional boundaries of legislative solemnity, exuberantly venturing into the realm of comedy. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Nordeep Squally, NDP candidate for Spadina Fort York, and I'm joined as well today by Claire Haxel, NDP candidate for Toronto Danforth. I would like to start to, to by acknowledging that we're standing on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, as well as the ancestral home to members of the Métis Nation. It's my pleasure to welcome the Customs and Immigration Union President, Mark Weber, and members, CIU members to the riding and to Toronto's beautiful revitalized waterfront, which now includes the revitalized Bathurst Key where we find ourselves today. Thanks to the Waterfront Neighborhood Centre, an important community hub for hosting us. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the leader of Canada's NDP, Jagneet Singh. Thanks so much, Nan. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Norm, and, and thank you to Mark, who's going to be speaking a bit later, and of course to Claire, our candidate from Danforth, for being here, and for the workers that are here. I believe, uh, all of us here believe, that everyone in our country should feel safe. You should be safe in your communities, safe going to work, safe when you come back home, safe when you go to the park. Uh, safe. You should be safe. You have the right to be safe. Sadly, that is not what it feels like right now. We're seeing a really serious increase in gun violence, particularly. We heard this week of uh, really troubling allegations by the RCMP 
that a foreign government is actually hiring organized criminals, gangs, to engage in gun violence in our communities. And when we think about what gun violence means to people, I think about the people that are impacted. Of course, we know the lives that are cut short, but all the potential that, that person that was killed could have contributed back to their to their communities, the things that they could have achieved in their lives. The families left behind mourning them, mourning their loss. The loved ones that are left with the trauma of seeing someone that they care deeply about killed in that way. So there is deep impacts of gun violence. And we know that the majority of guns that are involved in these serious crimes, the majority, the vast majority of those guns, when they're seized by the police, turns out 85% of them are smuggled across the border. Now, our customs, uh, our, our CIU workers, these are workers that can protect our, our country. It offered a rare and captivating perspective for scrutinizing the nuances and intricacies of parliamentary conduct on one of Canada's most esteemed stages. Such a spectacle has prompted reflection concerning the gravity with which political discourse should be appropriately handled, particularly in today's heightened climate of escalating global tensions and looming uncertainties. The recurring call for reevaluating security measures stirs curiosity and continues to echo with as much regularity in today's media discourse as the cries of fake news. Here lies a whimsical yet conceivable notion that Singh perceives himself not merely as a participant in parliamentary sessions, but as the protagonist of an epic cinematic quest, gallantly traversing hidden archives and secret forces. Meanwhile, several commentators suggest these theatrical actions may serve as diversions from Canada's pressing issues, such as the unchecked rising costs of housing, a matter somewhat overshadowed and limited by Trudeau's government. Ironically, these security concerns conveniently obscure the economy-focused critiques that target the Liberal administration's perceived shortcomings. Amid ongoing media scrutiny and humor-filled conjecture concerning Singh's performance, a pervasive question arises within the Canadian public realm. What clandestine strategies might the Liberals and their associates be formulating behind closed doors? Could this unfolding political saga be sophisticated stagecraft, meticulously orchestrated to divert community focus away from persistent governance issues. Such intricate political narratives might actually redirect attention from Singh's imaginative heroism to broader questions regarding the secrecy that political figures may adopt concerning transparency and accountability. Each traumatic flourish, albeit a momentary source of amusement, ultimately steers attention toward deeper essential inquiries about the authenticity and effectiveness of political leadership within an ever-complex global environment. Perhaps this entire scenario serves as a rallying cry, encouraging one to look beyond the political theatrics and sincerely engage with the fundamental challenges that the country faces today. As the ambient laughter gradually fades into the backdrop of daily life across Canada's diverse communities, Canadians continue with their everyday pursuits. All the while this inadvertent comedic event starring Jebmeet Singh endures as a poignant reminder of the vibrancy and unpredictability inherent within Canadian political life. Though the incident was comically memorable, it opened the door to significant inquiries concerning Canada's myriad of urgent issues that require earnest attention. As Singh teeters tenuously on the delicate balance between fervent political advocacy and the realm of absurdity, it remains crucial not to lose sight of the underlying forces progressively molding the nation's political narrative. How are the Liberals positioning themselves on pivotal national issues? Who ensures oversight when cross-border threats potentially loom on the horizon? Ultimately, this situation encourages Canadian citizens to maintain vigilant participation and awareness in the political arena. As a conscientious member of Canadian society, how do you perceive this curious episode? Is it merely a fleeting distraction from the way matters at hand, or does it reflect deeper, systemic issues within our political culture? In the grand and political theater, discourse thrives most effectively through active engagement and thoughtful consideration. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Singh has still some credibility left that can actually change the Canadians' minds? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.